Today we're down on Prairie Avenue, down here in South Beach, close to Miami Beach High School. It's a pretty nice street to take a walk on. We've been down here a couple times before, but I always like circling back to some great spots that I haven't been to in a while. It's been a few months since we've been here. And you know, one thing that we have been hearing a lot about is all these institutional investors that have been losing money on the deals that they've made. The most popular news stories with this are companies like Open Door and Zillow and Redfin. They all had the iBuyer programs where they'd come in, pay over asking price for your house, and then try to turn around and sell it for a profit. Well, now that most of those companies are completely done, the only one I think that's even left right now is Open Door, and they're barely hanging on by a thread. A portion of this investor market that's not often talked about that much are the institutional investors that buy up rental buildings or multifamily buildings. Basically, their business model is buy it cheap or what they deem to be cheap with other people's money on a floating interest rate debt nonetheless, and then come in, make some renovations. Some people are probably much more diligent at this than others, and turn around and try to rent the place for a lot more, which is basically called a value add deal. You're buying the property, adding value to it, and then the goal is to turn around and not flip it, but rent the properties for a lot more money and increase your income. Well, a few months ago, we talked about a company that's doing this. They're called Apple's Way. They recently lost 3,000 rental units in Houston, Texas. They lost all these units in foreclosure, guys. Now, we're gonna dig deep into this story today of why this is happening and how this is happening and how it really affects you because if you think that it doesn't because you're not an institutional investor you couldn't be more wrong about it so that's why it's important for people to understand what's happening why it's happening and how it's going to affect you now this apple's way investment firm is owned by an indian guy named gaja veli apparently he's been very good at raising capital for these type of deals where people will invest their money and he takes their money and goes and secures uh, floating interest rate debt to go out and buy these properties. And this guy gave the promise when he was doing this over the past couple of years, oh, don't worry about the economy, none of that matters. Regardless of where the economy goes, I make money. That was the promise he made to his investors. And if you're an investor in a company like his, your hope is that you're gonna invest some money and either get a monthly return on that investment if the property's rented, or if they turn around and sell it and flip it, that you're gonna get a share of the profits. That would be a reasonable expectation from a real estate investment. Now here's where Gajavelli's company got in trouble. Okay, they took out a bunch of floating rate debt, like I said, and this is the business model that all these institutional investors use, by the way. So this is not exclusive to Apple's way. So basically, when they take out these loans, the interest rate gets adjusted from month to month, depending on what the federal funds rate is doing. And as of 2021, when Gajavelli's company secured some of these loans, the interest rate was only 3.5%. But obviously you can imagine that it has gone up substantially since then. And basically what happened to these 3,000 units that Apple's Way owned is they thought they were going to come in there, buy up these properties, fix them up, and rent them for more, right? Well, where they got in trouble was with this floating rate debt because you always hear that these institutional investors have all this cash, right? They pay cash for everything. Well, on paper, they pay cash, but in reality, it's not cash. They still borrow money just like you and I do, but their borrowing terms are much more volatile than yours, yours or mine. If you have a 15 or 30 year fixed mortgage, you're set on that rate, okay? But these guys, their interest rate fluctuates by the month. And so basically, with these 3,000 units that Apple's Way lost in foreclosure, the payments skyrocketed on, the property was no longer profitable, so they just stopped paying the bills, okay? Take it away. And that's exactly what happened. But the problem here is that these companies are financially backed by small investors like you and me, people who put in 15, 20 grand, maybe 50 grand if, you're, if you have some cash, guys. You know, these investors will raise money from people like us with the promise of a return. And in the end, if something like this happens and you were invested in this property, 
Well, better luck next time. Now, Gajaveli is what is known as a real estate syndicator. And what real estate syndicators do is their job is just to, you know, rally people up and get them to invest in their company in order to buy these deals like this. And it was reported between 2020 and 2022, these real estate syndicators like Gajaveli, they raised about $115 billion in that two year period to buy real estate. Now, probably some of the more well-managed ones did use a lot of that cash that they raised and actually paid real cash for these properties and don't have liens on them. But since most companies, they want to maximize their amount of acquisitions, what they did instead is they take the money just like you and me and they'll put a 20, 25% down payment on the multifamily building and finance the rest with this floating interest rate debt. And that's where they all get in trouble. So now many different real estate analysts are saying that they're anticipating a big wave of foreclosures for these type of properties that are gonna be coming to the market. And thanks to our lovely government in 2012, they eased up on the laws that allowed these syndicators to make it easier for them to collect money from people even raising investment capital online from small people like joe schmo that only has 10 grand to put in this thing and apparently a lot of these investment firms focus heavily in the southern united states because the real estate was a lot cheaper here especially back then and most of the states down in this region have much easier eviction laws where they can easily kick people out of their homes for not paying or whatever violation of the lease that they have. So they really targeted the Southern US for these acquisitions. And these guys were able to take advantage of this huge ride up during the pandemic, as you can imagine, when rent prices went up pretty much nationwide by 37% during this time. So they were able to really ride this up and collect a lot of extra money from these properties that they acquired. And it turns out if you invest with one of these syndicators that you practically have no legal rights, okay? You're not entitled to how the money's spent. You're not, not entitled to any financial performance or reports. You're not even entitled to any say-so in which properties get purchased or sold, nothing like that. And the problem is that some of these investors who invested in companies like Apple's Way are only just now finding out that all their money is gone. One of these individual investors who claims he's the largest individual investor in the company's four foreclosed properties in Houston, him and his wife have lost millions. They lost the majority of their life savings with Apple's Way. Also, two of their adult children invested with their company, with this company as well. These guys are getting completely burnt and there's no recourse, guys, because they took the chance, they invested with this company, they lost and there's no recourse, okay? You just lose the money. It's like buying a lottery ticket. You can spend as much as you want on lottery tickets. If you lose, there's nothing that you can do about it besides play more. And by the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, guys, make sure you give it a quick like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Now, what a lot of these syndicators are doing right now is they're trying to ask their investors for even more money because their interest rates have made their expenses unaffordable or they're trying to sell them before they go into foreclosure. So a bunch of these big investment firms are totally scrambling right now with this and it's a huge nightmare and that's why it's anticipated that there's going to be many more defaults with this ah the good old miami flip in this case the high-end flip they purchased this house back in 2021 for 1.76 million then listed it for sale for four and a half million and now they have a contract as of may of 2023 so it will be interesting to see how much this house actually sells for and their property tax bill is $28,000 a year, and that is with a homestead exemption. And to make matters worse, not only do these syndicators have all these floating rate loans, but a lot of them have balloon payments that are coming due by the end of this year or next year. So they have to come up with a huge sum of money to pay off these loans, which is pretty similar to what's happening in the commercial market with all the office buildings. So you're seeing this huge problem with all this commercial real estate, guys. And that's why I said at the beginning that this is going to have an effect on everybody everywhere because these problems are so large and severe that it's gonna bleed over into all different sectors of the economy, which will ultimately affect 
the residential market. Because here's the other problem. Just like with the office buildings, these multifamily investors are in the same dilemma right now. They want to offload these places before they go into foreclosure or raise more money. Well, who in their right mind is going to give anybody more money right now when these guys have been practically been caught losing people's money left and right. So that's the problem number one. And the other problem is what other investor is going to come in and buy these multifamily properties from them? Because if they can't turn a profit, there's no way a new investor is going to be able to turn a profit. So no one's going to want them just like the office buildings. Okay. People that are going to come in and buy these properties, they're going to want half off. Okay. Big discount time. You want me to pay for this? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll buy it from you 50% off. And how does this bleed over into the rest of the economy and the residential market? Well, think about these people that are losing all this money. Remember, it's small time investors like you and me that pour money into these syndicators and they're the ones losing all of your money. And so when you don't have money to buy things or invest in things, that slows the economy down. Okay, simple as that. It could even force some people into bankruptcy if they really went long and hard on this, like this couple that spent millions and blew their life savings, you know? And basically at the end of the day, a lot of these fundraiser guys like Gajavelli and Grant Cardone, he's another syndicator, guys. They're scam artists, okay? They're salesmen that are out there convincing people that they're the greatest investor who ever lived and that's why you should invest with them because they'd never lose and look at all this money I've made. They drive Ferraris around town, have private jets and all of this fake crap to make you believe that these guys are doing so well and if you want to be like them, you need to join them. Okay, that's pretty much their sales pitch. Kind of like the multi-level marketing people. You know, they'd use the same psychological tactics like, hey, look, I'm driving a new Mercedes every year. This could be you if you just sign up with my company, right? Some of these guys even charge for courses. I read in here that one of these uh, real estate syndicators over there is charging $35,000 a year for one of the mentorship programs that's supposed to teach you the ropes of how all this works, right? So basically they're teaching you how to scam other people because that's really the lesson to be learned here. Because to me, these guys are nothing more than scam artists that are selling people on broken promises to invest their money with them. And in the end, they have no responsibility if they lose it. Oh, you guess you didn't read the fine print. Should have consulted a lawyer before you invested with us, huh? And so one guy who was a smaller investor, didn't invest millions, he invested 75 grand, okay? And it was in an apartment complex in Houston as well. And the complex was selling for $76 million. And Gajavelli, he told the investors in this place that they would be able to more than double their money in three to five years. He was also telling them there's a huge demand for rentals in this area. The only problem is that the people that are living there, they don't have good credit and they don't have down payments to buy homes. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're renters forever. They're going to live here forever. So don't worry about that. They'll pay the increase if we up the rent. And this is not just in Houston, guys. And this is not just with this Gajavelli, guys. It turns out in some of these popular Sunbelt markets like uh, Houston and Phoenix, Las Vegas, Austin, Texas, about 60% of all the multifamily apartment buildings that were purchased over the past decade have been purchased by these big investment firms okay so you're talking more than half you can understand the scale of this problem right now and to make matters even worse check this out these syndicators pretty much don't invest any of their own money okay they collect acquisition fees from their investors that are anywhere between two to five percent of the apartment building's purchase price and they also take management fees that are two to three percent of the building's yearly gross income and these syndicators can turn a profit just off these fees alone even if the investment is a complete failure the building doesn't have to actually make any money because they're making their money when they purchase off of the fees that they charge you as well as the management fees each month I'm gonna walk over here by the golf course and get under some of these trees and get some shade. It's so hot out here today. So here is the huge red flag with this, guys. These syndicators are making money not off the investment, okay? They're making it off the fees that they charge you to invest with them, okay? So that's how this is just a huge scam. These guys don't, have to, don't actually have to make any money. 
and they're not really incentivized to either because as you can see the, the money that they make is not tied to their performance of how good of an investment that they make all right these guys are getting paid regardless of the property makes money or not and this is so bad that the building that they purchased in 2021 with this guy that invested 70 grand in it they had a beautiful presentation you know nice video brochure of the property showing how nice and neat everything is there and um, you know how clean how clean the swimming pool was everything like that and by 2022 just a year later okay the pool was green and there was piles of trash everywhere tenants were complaining about mold rats illegal evictions and the fact that they're not doing anything to maintain the property these guys were being such slumlords that when somebody would request a new air conditioner remember it's houston it's hot just like here in miami they would they would just rip an air conditioner a wall unit out of one of the vacant units and stick it in one of the units that someone was complaining about that was their solution to this and it's so bad that the mayor of houston is getting involved in this and threatening legal action if Gajavelli's company doesn't do something and just like we talked about their big play here was in february they sent out an email to a bunch of their investors pretty much asking them for more money because you know they can't afford to pay their bills so this guy's just telling people oh sorry things aren't going too well right now we need more cash in order to so we don't lose more properties in foreclosure right now put yourself in the position of one of these investors you have already been duped by this guy to give them a big chunk of money to do one of these investment deals and then you're going to give them more money when they, they cry to you saying that they're going broke <laughs> and then check this out just a month later another email comes out and says oh don't worry we don't need the money anymore because we're just letting it go into foreclosure and the advice was to contact your tax professional and see how these investment losses can be recognized on your tax return that's the advice that they're giving to people like this we took your money thanks you know take it up with your accountant guys that's what's happening right now and remember this is all small time investors this is happening to some bigger people that have millions to lose of, of course and maybe they can afford to lose those millions but a lot of smaller people too you know 70 grand is a small investor just yet another thing that's going to have devastating consequences in this economy if you ask me we don't know to what extent but it's just that every single week we keep reading about new problems that are cropping up out of nowhere you know these surprise foreclosures that people are going through these surprise that we lost all your money real estate investments people are going through surprise layoffs like everything is a surprise right now nothing can be predicted and this is going to get even worse because right now in these particularly in these sunbelt rental markets there's going to be a huge wave of new inventory coming to market for these rentals guys this is already confirmed so these guys are already hurting these syndicators that have put together these deals and once more brand new construction units come on the market for rent it's going to lower how much they can charge for rent even further and this is a huge win for tenants like i've been telling you guys this is great news if you're a renter in one of these areas because it means that chances are next time you go up for your rental renewal you're going to be able to negotiate a lower price or find a better unit at a cheaper price somewhere else as of right now there is 950,000, practically 1 million new rental units under construction right now and these are all multi-family units okay and that's another way that i wanted to circle back to of how this is going to have a massive impact on the housing market okay when you have this huge supply of rentals flood the market and we're already seeing at a time when rentals are basically cheaper everywhere it's almost cheaper to rent every in every major city now across the united states than it is to buy that's a no-brainer decision for most people because people don't have the money they have the student loan payments resuming they have inflation eating up their paychecks and if someone has to decide oh am i going to pay 500 dollars a month less in rent or two thousand dollars a month less in rent versus owning the decision is simple okay it's not a hard one to make for anybody and that's why i said you need to listen to these things and understand that this is going to have a big impact on the residential housing market because even though the problems are starting on the commercial side it's all going to bleed over into residential in the form of people losing all this money and not being able to afford things as well as the huge supply of new 
rental units that are making it to the market within the next year or two, guys. So let me know if you want me to cover more of this uh, rental inventory situation that's cropping up. I have a whole story about it that I wasn't able to get to in this video. It's already been long enough, so I'll stop it here. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the bell notification down below. YouTube will alert you every time I post a new video. And if you don't wanna wait, check out my next one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.